Now, as thou lovest me, let me see his letter. Good, good Master Fabian, there you grant me another request. Anything. Do not desire to see the letter. This is to give a dog and in recompense, ask for my dog back again. Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friends? Aye, sir, we are some of her trappings. <laughs> I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Uh, truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Marry, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me. Now my foes tell me plainly I am an ass, so that by my foes, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends I am abused. <laughs> Why, this is excellent. <laughs> oh, by my troth, no, sir, though it please you to be one of my friends. Thou shalt not be worse for me, there's gold. <laughs> but that it would be double dealing, sir, I wouldn't you could make it another. Well, I will be so much a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Well, primo secundo tertio is a good play, and they do say that the third pays for all. You can fool no more money out of me at this throw. If you will let your lady know that I'm here to speak with her, it may awake my bounty further. Marry, sir, lullaby to your bounty till I come again. I will awake it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. What's the matter? This is that Antonio that took the Phoenix and her freight from Carthage. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew Titus lost his leg. Here, in the streets, desperate of shame and state, in private quarrel, did we apprehend him? He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion, put strange speech upon me. I know not what twas, but distraction. Notable pirate, thou salt water thief, what foolish boldness hath brought thee to their mercies, whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hath made thine enemies. Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and ground enough, Orsino's enemy. Her witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth did I redeem. A rack past hope he was. His life I gave him, and did there to add my love, without retention or restraint, all his in dedication. For his sake, did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this abject town, drew to defend him when he was beset, where... Being apprehended, his false cunning taught him to face me out of his acquaintance and grew a twenty years removed thing while one would wink. Denied me mine own purse, which I'd recommended to his use not half an hour before. He? When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before. No interim, not a minute's vacancy. Both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months this youth hath tended upon me, but more of that than none. Take him aside. Well, good my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable. Cesario, you do not keep promise with me? Madam. Gracious Olivia. Good my lord. My, my lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To perverseness? You uncivil lady, 
to whose ingrate and inauspicious altars my soul the faithfulest offerings have breathed out that e'er devotion tendered what shall i do even what it please my lord that shall become him why should i not had i the heart to do it kill what i love oh a savage jealousy that sometimes savored nobly but hear me this since you to non-regardance cast my faith and that i partly know the instrument that screws me from your true place in your favor live you the marble-breasted tyrant still but this your minion whom i know you love and whom by heaven i swear i tender dearly him i will tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowded in his master's spite come boy with me my thoughts are ripe in mischief i'll sacrifice the lamb that i do love to spite a raven's heart within a dove and i most jocund apt and willingly to do you rest a thousand deaths would die where goes cesario after him i love more than i love these eyes more than my life more by all more than e'er i shall love life i me detested how am i beguiled who does beguile you who does do you harm hast thou forgot thyself is it so long call forth the holy father come away with her, my lord cesario husband stay husband i husband can he that deny her husband sirrah no my lord not i oh fear not cesario take thy fortunes up be that thou know'st thou art and then thou art as strong as that thou fearest oh welcome father father i thee i charge thee by thy reverence here to unfold though lately we intended to keep in darkness which occasion now reveals before tis ripe what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me a contract of eternal bond of love confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands attested to by holy close of lips strengthened by the interchangement of your rings and all the ceremony of this compact sealed in my function by my testimony since when my watch hath told me toward my grave i have traveled but two hours oh thou dissembling cub what wilt thou be when time has sowed a grizzle on thy face or wilt not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow farewell and take her but direct thy feet where thou and i henceforth may never meet my lord i do protest i do not swear hold little faith though thou hast too much fear oh god a surgeon and said one presently to say to me what's the matter he's brought my head across and has given sir toby a bloody coxcomb too hello oh, god your help i had rather than 40 pound i were at home who has done this sir andrew my house gentleman one cesario we took him for a coward but he's a very darling comment my gentleman cesario oh it's life is there he is you broke my head for nothing and that i did i said on to my sir toby why do you speak to me i never hurt you you drew your sword upon me without cause but i bespoke you fair and hurt you not yeah bloody cocks come be a hurt you have hurt me here comes sir toby halting you shall hear more but if he had not been a drink he would have taken the worse than he did how now gentlemen how is it with you oh hey, hey. so one who's hurt me there's an end of it so did see big surgeon sat oh he's drunk sir toby an hour gone his eyes were set at eight in the morning oh, and he's a rogue and a passing major's problem i hate a drunken rogue away with him who hath made this havoc with them 
I'll help you, Sir Toby, because we all be dressed together. Will you help? An asshead, a coxcomb, a knave, a thin faced knave, go! Get him to bed and let his hurt be looked to. I am sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You, you throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. A natural perspective that is and is not. Antonio! Oh, my dear Antonio! How have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearst thou that, Antonio? Uh, how have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Uh, uh, but which? Is Sebastian. Most wonderful. Do I stand there? I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. O of charity, what kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Of Messaline, Sebastian was my father. Such a Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. Oh, his spirits can attune, can attain both form and suit. You come to fright us. A spirit I am indeed, but am in that dimension grossly clad, which from the womb I did participate. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, thrice welcome, drowned Viola? My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. It died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered 13 years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished it indeed, his mortal act, the day that made my sister 13 years. Oh, if, if nothing lets to make us happy both, but this my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me till, <gasps> till every circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere and jump that I am. Viola, which to confirm, I'll bring thee to a captain in this town where lie my maiden's garments. He, his gentle, his gentle help hath preserved me to serve this noble Lord. And all the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this Lord. So comes it, lady, you have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid, nor therein are you by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true. I shall have share in this most happy rack. Boy, <laughs> thou hast said to me a thousand times thou never shouldst love woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear, and all those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orb and cotton and the fire that severs day from night. Give me thy hand. And let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maiden's garments. He, upon some action, is now endurance at Malvolio's suit. He shall release him. 
fetch her Malvolio hither. Yet, <laughs> at last now I remember me. <laughs> they say, poor gentleman, he is much distract. How does he, Sirrah? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at arm's length, as well as a man in his case may do. He, he hath writ a letter to you. I should have given it to you this morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, it matters little when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look then to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. <clears throat> By the Lord, madam! Now, now, art thou mad? No, madam, I, I do but read madness. <laughs> read it to you, sirrah. Oh. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> uh, by the Lord, madam, <clears throat> you wrong me and the world shall know it. Uh, though you have put me into darkness and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right or you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? I, uh, madam. This savors not much of distraction. See him delivered, Fabian, bring him hither. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife, one day shall crown our unions both, so please you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I'm most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you and for your service done him so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, so much against the metal of your sex. And since you called me master for so long, here is my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. A sister, you are she. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You must not now deny it is your hand or say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then. And tell me in the modesty of honor why you have given me such clear lights of favor. Bade me come smiling and cross gartered to you to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. And acting this in an obedient of hope, why have you suffered me to be in prison? Kept in a dark house, visited by the priest and made the most notorious geck and gull that e'er invention played on. Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing, though I confess much like the character, but out of the question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I do bethink me, twas she first told me that thou wast mad, and, and then thou camest in smiling, and in such favor as as are here presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice has most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Good madam, he he hear me speak. And let no quarrel nor no brawl to come taint the condition of this present hour, which I have wondered at in hope it shall not. Most freely I confess, Myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio here. Uh, upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him, Maria writ the letter at Sir Toby's great insistence in recompense where he hath married her. <laughs> How with a sportful malice it was followed, may rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. Alas, poor fool. 
How have they baffled thee? Why, some are born great. Some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> I was one, sir, in this interlude, uh, one Sir Topaz, uh, that's all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad, but do you remember, oh. madam, I laugh you at such a barren rascal. If you smile not on him, he's gagged. And thus the whirly gig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. Pursue him and entreat him to a peace. He hath not yet told us of the captain. When that is known and golden time convince, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Cesario, <laughs> come, for so you shall be while you are a man. But when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When that I was and a little tiny boy with hey ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy for the rain it raineth every day. And when I came to man's estate with hey ho, the wind and the rain, against knaves and thieves men shut their gates for the rain it raineth every day. And when I came alas to wive with hey ho, the wind and the rain, by swaggering could I never thrive, for the rain it raineth every day. And when I came unto my beds with hey ho, the wind and the rain, with top but still had drunken heads, for the rain it raineth every day. A great while ago, the world begun with hey ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all one. Our play is done, and we'll strive to please you every day. Hello, thank you very much for all of you for watching. This has been an important project for all of us, uh, an opportunity to renew old connections. Um, and we are so happy to have shared it with all of you because obviously the audience is what makes it theater. We have a Q&A function in Zoom. And if you have questions or comments for the company, please feel free to um, ask a question on the Q&A and we will do our best to answer it. Thank you again very much.